God I stretch my hands unto thee no other help do I know if thou withdraw thy hands from me Lord where where will I go good morning Lake Providence Arise, giving honor to God, Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. To the pastor of the church, our pastor H. Bruce Maxwell, to the associate ministers who are here in the pulpit, to all the officers, officials of the church, to Members, God bless you. Uh, to my good thing. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, but to my good thing. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> to my children. If you only knew how much your daddy loves you. The members of the church, visitors, friends, let's have a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you once again for doing all that you do and being all that you are. Thank you for allowing this opportunity. Now I step aside and allow you to do your work. Claim the victory today, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Satan fought pretty hard for me not to be here this morning. I told the pastor earlier I've been sick all week. Uh, I had to go to the doctor and get a round of antibiotics and steroids and stuff coming out of every which way. I don't know. Maybe God got something for somebody. But I know he fought me pretty hard to get here this morning. So um, if I don't live up to your expectations, I'm not giving an excuse. But I have been under the weather. So if I lose my voice in the midst of this thing, uh, somebody just carry me on to the back. <laughs> Give me another shot, I guess. But if I would, I'd like to talk to you from the subject of this morning, save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. We're coming from the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter. It's the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter. And as I begin to talk about this Palm Sunday, I ask you to pray for me and pray with me. Jesus has been walking with his disciples for some time now. He's been giving them instructions on what is about to happen. He's been telling all kinds of parables saw many different things he spoke of, instructions on humility, and punishment of offenders. He was instructed about divorce and parables of the lost sheep, instructions about forgiveness. He even came in contact with the rich young ruler, gave parables about the laborers, and gave instructions about selfish ambition. But now, Jesus is at the point where he has mentioned to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and he must die at the hands of the Pharisees. And while Jesus 
is telling the disciples what's getting ready to happen. Of course, they don't really believe him. They don't really accept him saying who he really is. They're just going along for right now. But as it goes, we're entering into the Passover feast time. And Jesus begins as he approaches the city of Jerusalem. Jesus begins to set a scene for all of his disciples to see and all of the people in the city now in Jerusalem to see. Because this is a Passover. This is where everybody comes and, and worships the, the true and the living God at a particular time of the year. So everybody's coming down. There's, sub, there's, there's going to be probably over 2 million people down here in the city of Jerusalem. So this is what they call Jesus' triumphant entry. This is what is labeled as the triumphant entry. Let me read this to you. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at Mount, the Mount of Olives, and Jebus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coach with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before them rose and followed him crying out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come to Jerusalem and all the city was moved saying, who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from, Na from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold the doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and were healed. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna, son of David, they were indignant and said to him, you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of babe and nursing infants? You shall have perfected praise. Then they left him, went out of Beth Bethany, and he lodged there. Save now. Savior. Jesus makes his entry to the Mount of Olives. Now I have to let you know that Jesus wasn't accepted in the city of Jerusalem because he came, they said, teaching a strange doctrine. Uh, they did not want him there, but he was who he said he was. He was the king. And he came to, to let them know that he was the king. And Jesus began to set a scene using the premises of the Mount of Olives. I've been told that the Bible, the Bible says that when he drew near to Jerusalem, he came up to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Now the Mount of Olives, I've been told, is located 2,400 to 2,700 feet above the city of Jerusalem. And, and I believe that this spot was chosen by Jesus on purpose. He chose it because I've been told that from the Mount of Olives, you can see the whole city of Jerusalem down below. And I also told that in the city of Jerusalem, you can see everything that's happening on top, the Mount of Olives. So Jesus now purposely chooses this point to make his triumphant entry as the Messiah, as the king into the city of Jerusalem. So he did this on purpose so that they could see him coming in. Amen? Amen. So Jesus is now setting his own scene. Now in verse number two, he says, 
saying to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. Now this was what they call the royal ride. This was the royal ride. This is what Jesus got on the donkey and, and, and made his royal ride into the city of Jerusalem. Now this donkey that Jesus is sitting on, somebody might ask him, why is he riding a donkey? What, 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 what is the meaning of that? Well, the donkey ride was a, was a messianic sign. See, back in old times, back in ancient times, leaders would ride horses when they went to war. But riding on the donkey meant that he came at a sign, in a sign of peace and royalty and humility. 1 Kings 1 and 33, David sent his son Solomon to the city, his chosen successor, riding on the donkey. 2 Samuel 18, 9, Absalom, King David's son, rode into the city on a donkey. In Judges 5 and 10, J.R. the judge, the Gilead, had 30 sons who rode in the city on 30 donkeys. So this donkey ride was significant. It had a messianic tone to it. It had a symbolism to it. It was a symbol of peace, royalty, and humility. So then he told them, go get me a donkey, go to the city, do as I said, and, 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 uh, and, and you'll, you'll find a coat tied with her and, and bring them to me. And, and if anyone says to you, you should say the Lord has need of them, and immediately they will send them. Well, the Lord has need of them. Well, this was an unusual request for Jesus to send somebody into a city to take something that didn't belong to them. It's kind of like stealing, ain't it? Kind of like. It was an unusual request, but Jesus. Here is teaching the reader and is also teaching his disciples of his divine foreknowledge. Because Jesus, I don't know if they missed it or not, but Jesus told them exactly where the donkey would be. And not only was he teaching of his divine foreknowledge, he was also teaching of his divine omniscience. Because he told them that what exactly they would ask them. He said, somebody going to say to you, what are you doing with that donkey? And when they ask you that, all you got to say is that the Lord has need of them. All, all Jesus is trying to tell his disciples and us is all you need to do is trust me. All you need to do is trust in the Lord with all thine heart, all thine mind, and all thine soul. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall. He shall direct your path. All we need to do is put a trust in the Lord. It may sound a little crazy sometimes he asks you to do something. It may sound a little weird to the folks around you when God is telling you to do something, but that's all right. You just do what God has called you to do. They may call you a fool. They may look at you funny, but that's okay. You just do what God has called you to do. And if God has called you to do it, he's going to be with you always, even until the end of the earth. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I know God is calling somebody to do something that sounds strange to you, but that's all right. You do what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you, he'll meet you right there. He's going to meet you right there. Well, well, now we see here, in the text, Jesus is setting the scene of his triumphant entry. Jesus is coming in on the donkey, sending a sign to those that are watching who would understand that this is a messianic symbol, that they would understand what exactly Jesus is doing. They would know that this man is calling himself a king. This man is calling himself the Messiah. This man is calling himself royalty. This man is saying that he is the chosen one. This man is saying he is the, the, the son of the living God. Right. Yes, sir. Jesus didn't hold no shame about it. Came down that hill on the donkey. And the Bible said he did it for this reason right here. Verse number five, verse number four, he said, all this was done. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Tell the daughters of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey. A coat, the foal of a donkey. Well, 
what Jesus was trying to say was scripture has to be fulfilled. They understood that scripture had to be fulfilled. That was Zechariah 9 and 9. But if I take you back to Isaiah 53, I'm going to tell you what it looks like when scripture is being fulfilled. The Bible says he, the, the, the Bible says in Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, it says, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before us as a tender plant. As a root out of the dry ground, he has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. I'm talking about a, prophet, a messianic prophecy being fulfilled. He is despised and rejected by men. He's a man of sorrows and well acquainted with grief. And we, and, and, and we, and, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He, dis, he was despised and rejected, and he was not esteemed. Surely has been, he has borne our griefs and carries our, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Does that sound like Jesus to you? He was a chastisement of our peace was upon him, and, 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 and by his stripes we were healed. And we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned on every one of us to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he was open, he, he did not open his own mouth. Does that sound like my Jesus to you? He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shears in silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison to judgment to judgment. And who shall declare this generation? For he was cut off from his own land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they, and they had made him a grave with the wicked. Sound like my Jesus? But with, the rich at his, but, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence. Nor was there any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put... He, uh, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall be prolonged his days, and the measure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. And by his knowledge, his righteousness, his, his, his servant shall justify many. For he shall bear the iniquity thereof. I will divide him into his portion with the great with the great, and he shall divide the spoil of the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered among the transgressors. He bore the sins of many, and he made intercession for the transgressor. Sound like my Jesus? Sound like your Jesus? I know that was a lot for some of y'all. I just need I, I needed to do that to wake a few of y'all up. Sound like your Jesus? Scripture had to be fulfilled. That's the message he was trying to send. He came for, as a fulfillment of the scripture. I am the scripture. You're looking at the scripture. I am everything you're reading about. I am the past, the present, and the future. Everything you've looked at in the past as far as the messianic signs, I am he. Scripture had to be fulfilled. Well, well, so the disciples went and did as Jesus told him to do. Then they brought the donkey and the colt and laid the clothes on him. Well, I need to tell somebody something. The sign of them laying their clothes out on Jesus, that was a sign of honor. That was a sign of preference. That was a sign of homage. What they were saying was, I'm under your authority. You are the king. You are the one who you say you are. You are the long-awaited Messiah. You are the messianic promise. You are the son of the living God. We cast our clothes at your feet. And the Bible says in verse number 8, And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road and cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Now, these signs, these palm trees, y'all, a few of y'all got them in your hand. These, these, these palm trees you got in your hand, those were the things that they laid out in the road for Jesus to ride on. And this was a sign of victory. Usually saved for after the enemy's defeat. But what they were saying was, victory belongs
belongs to Jesus. And I don't know if anybody understands what I'm trying to say today, but victory belongs to Jesus. We don't have to fight the fight in order to know that victory belongs to Jesus. We already know that victory belongs to Jesus. You can throw your palm uh, branches down in the road because victory belongs to Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. All you got to do, if you know that Jesus is mine, I know I got the victory. The devil might be trying to tear me down every which way, but all I got to do is think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And I know that I'm a winner. I know that I'm on the right team. I know that God is on my side. I know that whatever I face, all that come in my direction, all things shall work together for the good of those who love the Lord and for those who are called according to his purpose. God has a purpose and a plan for everybody's situation that you're going through. Don't think for one minute that victory is not yours. The devil might have you holding down your head. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head and see the salvation of God. It ain't over, baby, until God says it's over. It ain't over. See, your enemies done counted you out. Your enemies say you wasn't going to make it. They talked about you bad, but look at you. God is still here, and when that thing, by the time that thing is over, God's going to give you the victory because you're trusting in the almighty, everlasting, all true, all promising, all giving, all loving, all powerful. God is able to do exceedingly above and beyond anything that you can ask or think. Oh, yeah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. My enemy might be trying to hold me back, but victory is mine. Your enemy might be trying to hold you back, but victory is yours. All you got to do is plant your feet solid on the word of God, and God will. I promise you he will. I promise you he will. He'll make a way out of no way. When they shut the door in your face, say, that's all right. I see a hole God's making to, for me to walk through. When they try to say, you ain't going to make it say, that's all right. My God is able. When they try to put stumbling blocks in your path, God ain't going to do nothing but turn them into stepping stones. What I'm trying to tell you is, God is able. Can't stop God. Can't stop Jesus. No matter how much they try. They can't stop Jesus. Victory is mine. All I got to do is trust and obey. All I got to do is put my hand in the master's hand. All I've got to do is believe what Jesus said. All I've got to do is live the truth. All I've got to do is put my trust, rely, release, remember God will make a way. God will. God will make a way. Well, well, Jesus is on your side. Jesus is on my side. And the Bible said when they threw the branches down on the road, said, uh, then the multitude went before Jesus. Jesus got a multitude behind him, and he's got a multitude in front of him. And everybody's hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, let me tell you what Hosanna means. Hosanna means save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. That's what the people are hearing. Say now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Somebody in the back may need to hear that this morning. Save now, Savior. I've been had a long, hard week. Save now. Savior, they trying to hold me back. Save now. Savior, they trying to steal my joy. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my house. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my car. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my health. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my child. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my mind. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose my job. Save now. Savior, I'm about to lose everything that I've worked hard for. Save now. Savior, my husband walking out on me. Save now. 
Savior. Well, that's what the people were hearing when they were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Well, the Bible tells me, they said, save now in the highest. Save now in the highest. Well, verse number 10 says, and when he came to Jerusalem, he's uh, coming down the hill, coming down Mount Carmel. They hollering, save now, Savior. By the time Jesus reaches the end of the hill, well, my Bible tells me that Jesus, it said that when he came to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is it? Some folks don't know who Jesus is. Y'all going to get asked that question one day. The Bible says, be ready to give an answer. For all those who inquire about your faith, be ready to give an answer. I think there's a song that says, everybody don't know. I think it's Greg Bass singing that song. Everybody don't know. Some folks asking, who is it? You got to tell them who he is. You got to tell them who he is. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says, so the multitude said, this is Jesus. The prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Then the Bible said, after that, then Jesus went straight to the temple. Went straight to the temple. And, 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 and what did he do? First matters first. First things first. First thing I got to do. If I'm the Messiah, if I'm the king, if I'm the, if I'm the awaited one, if I'm the prince of, of God, if I'm, the, the, if I'm, the, if I'm the, the son of the living God, he, he went to the temple. He went to the temple and drove out all of those who sold, bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and said unto them, it is written, the scripture, it is written, the scripture, my house shall be called a house house of prayer, but you jokers done made it a den of thieves. They had the wrong words. They had the right words when they were hollering, Hosanna. They had the right words, but they had the wrong heart. They believed Jesus was coming to defend them, but Jesus came to defend his house. He came to feel, defend his father's house, the one his father built, the one he built on love, the one he built on truth, the one he built on joy, the one he built on peace, the one he built on patience, the one he built on kindness, the one he built on goodness, the one he built on self-control. Y'all up in my house, tearing my house up. Jesus started turning over tables and, and the book of, I think it was John, telling us he had a whip and he started popping jokers in the back of the head. I can see them Pharisees running. Bow! You know he had perfect sight. You know he had perfect the tools they turned their back. Bow! Jesus came in that flipping table, running jokers. Get this mess out of my house. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Y'all jokers in here making it a den of thieves, selling three-eyed chickens and four-leg ducks, and y'all in here selling uh, uh, one-armed birds and all kinds of mess. This is my house. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Y'all about to make me act the fool. Ooh, up in here, up in here. <laughs> Y'all thought, who was that? DMX made that up, didn't you? <laughs> Y'all thought he made that up. That was Jesus. He said, first, first order of business, y'all think I'm coming to rescue y'all, but what I'm coming to do is set my house in order. What I'm coming to do is put back what the temple was all about. I come to fulfill the scriptures. I, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Verse 14 said, then the blind, listen, 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 listen. The blind came. The lame came to Jesus in the temple. Huh? Jesus Jesus come in the house. When Jesus is in the house, the blind came. When Jesus got the house right, the purpose of the house 
was right. The blind came. The lame came. And the Bible says they were healed. Even though he just finished, this, this is the second time he done uh, turned over the tables in the temple. Even though Jesus done turned over the tables and running out, folks, the blind are looking and hearing and listening what's going on. The lame are watching what's going on. And when they're looking at Jesus and they're saying to themselves, there's something good about this man. Y'all say what you want to, but there's something good about this man. There's some righteousness in this man. There's some goodness in this man. There's, this man has the right heart, and they came to him anyway. 15 says, 15 says, and when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, the children, the children began to cry out in the temple saying, save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Save now, Savior. Well, the children, the Bible said that the children looked at him. The children saw this man flipping over tables running folks out the temple, money flying everywhere, sandals all in the air, kicking over chairs. I wouldn't be surprised Jesus jumped at a few of them. Get your tail out of here. He didn't do that. I'm just, just using my imagination. The children came to Jesus saying, save. After all that he had just done, children saw righteous anger. And parents, that's a cue to us. It's all right to be angry. Make sure the children know the difference. Between anger that's filled with violence and rage and destruction, then there being righteous anger. There is a difference. There's a difference. Because when the children see it and it's right, they'll come to you. Just like they came to Jesus. Anyway, in spite how mad he was. Well, they were indignant when they saw this. The Pharisees, Sadducees, when they saw the priests, the chief priests, when they saw it, they were indignant and they said to themselves, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, have you not read? All about the scripture. All about, have you not read? Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfect praise. When Jesus is in the house, save Savior. Save Savior. Save Savior. When Jesus is in the house, healing will take place. Save now, Savior. Doors of the church open. My letter of experience, candidate for baptism. Anyone wants to come and join a Savior who can save now, today is your day. You come to the church, come on, come on down front, we're here. We'll accept you. We'll take you right in. We'll turn you right over to Jesus. Amen. As our deacons come and our choir begin to sing, somebody take it home with you. Save now. Savior.